Nick, Josh, congratulations. You guys are in the third and final round of this competition. Now, when you came here, you faced really tough challenges that escalated throughout the first two rounds. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The Zan Madao. Holy shit, this thing is huge. Today, I gotta try and figure out forging on this blade. I've never made anything as big as this before, so it'll be a unique challenge. This is what I'm starting with, big old piece 5160. My forge only has about 18 inches. It'll just be working on it a little bit at a time. Try and keep it simple and get something drawn out to size. This thing is gonna be gigantic. Damn. We got the length. It's a good start. End of day one. I got the whole blade forged out to a real rough shape. The plan for tomorrow is to get to the quench by the end of the day. Yesterday, I was able to get the blade shaped to where I want it. Now I can get busy grinding and hopefully by the end of the day to get it quenched. This is going to be a day filled with attention to detail. This is the most nerve wracking part. It's kind of the make or break moment. So get it in the oil, perfect. I pull it out. I didn't get a curve on it. I need it to have a curve on it because that will allow it to function the way it needs to. I've got to stick it back in the fire, and I've got to get it quenched. This is not what I wanted to have happen. So here we go again, quench number two. It didn't break. Best off, there's a little bit of a curve in it. Day two was an adventure. Pretty happy with where I'm sitting right now. So what I'm hoping to have done tomorrow is get the guard fitted up and be ready for the final day of fit and finish. Morning of day two, goal for today is to get everything heat treated. Doing about everything I can to try and get it as even as possible, but here we go. Coming out of the quench is gonna be a real challenge, so I clamp it down in some two by fours. The idea here is to help try and keep it uh, as straight as I can while it cools. End of day two, have a quench blade. So far, so good. I'm uh, doing OK, a little tired. Coffee and hate, that's what I'm fueled by. Just kidding, just coffee this morning. The sword looks phenomenal. Now I can really start focusing on the fit and finish. So I'm going to start working on my guard. After a lot of file work, I get the guard fit right up to the shoulders. It looks perfect. Now it's time to start securing everything. That seam there, I'll fill with a piece of cord, and then that's gonna be wrapped back to 12 inches. I've got to finish the handle, but I'm comfortable that I can get this blade done tomorrow. Goals for today are get the blade cleaned up and ground, and then move to working on the handle. Got the bevel ground in. Now I'm gonna start working on getting this handle fit up. I'm gonna I'll glue these two pieces together, we'll do some sculpting. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit smaller than I would because I plan on doing a wrap. Have a little bit of time left, so start working on shaping the guard. Doing a little fit on the guard. I'm happy with the shape. Overall, tomorrow is going to be final assembly, glue up, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I'm just glad Will hasn't shown up so far. I'm glad there's no more parameters. I got plenty of them. Yeah, that'll work. Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. Well, your Zamadaos aren't pocket knives. They definitely look very long. But what kind of lethal damage can they do? To find that out, I will take your weapons, deliver some slashes, and killing blows on this boar carcass. Take your first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, Dick. Let's talk about your weapon here. Now, the design you have, I was expecting a little bit more of a curve. Because of a straighter blade, it feels more like I'm chopping before I'm drawing. But as you can see, 
You look ill. Thank you. All right, Josh, your turn, so are you ready? Let's do it. All right, Josh, let's talk about your blade here. The balance is good. In as much as I can feel the power in there, I can wield this weapon and develop some speed and power. And the curvature that you have here does exactly what this kind of design is meant to do. Every cut was very deep on this carcass, enough to where it cut all the way through. And more importantly, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the strength test. Now, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I'll be chopping into the pots and into this horse skull. Now, remember, gentlemen, this is not about what your blades do to the targets. This is about what those targets are going to do to your blades. <laughs> Nick, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Nick, so there's not really any chipping or rolling that I can feel. It's just sort of just lost its, its fine edge. Yes, sir. Most of these weapons have a bit more of a curve, and, and this, it's got about as slight a curve as I could call a curve. Yes, sir. It's a very, very flexible blade, but it did well, so nice and done. Thank you, sir. All right, Josh. Let's do it. So Josh, very well-crafted blade, which I like. The, the guard, the dimensions, the size and the shape of the handle, all really beautiful. Unfortunately, though, we've got some rolling on the edge of this blade. Can you hear that? Yes, yeah, so you put an incredibly fine edge on this, and it showed in the kill test. But uh, not so good for hitting pots. It's a great feeling weapon, but uh, yeah, it did take that edge damage. All right, Bladesmith, now it's time to find out how sharp your blades are. This is the sharpest test, the dual Sandman Slice. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what the edge of your blade does to these Sandmen. Nick, you're up first. Ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, Nick, let's talk about your blade here. As you can see, it cut the arms, cut the legs, this emboldened the rice off the torso. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you, sir. All right, Josh, your turn, so you ready? Let's do it. All right, Josh, this is a cutter. Just the design of it really lends itself to really draw cut. The cuts are very deep and they're very clean when you're cutting through. The rolling it took did not affect its cutting ability. So overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. Bladesmiths, the judges' deliberation is complete. They've made their final decision. The new Forged and Fire champion is... Josh, congratulations. Nick, your blade didn't make the cut. Doug Markite is going to tell you why. Nick, the Zamandao was designed to be a horse slayer or a chopper. The amount of flex you have on your blade and the lack of curvature made it perform less than that of your competitor. All right, Nick, at this time, please leave the forge. Come on forward, my friend. I may not be the Forged and Fire champion, but by no means do I consider myself a loser. Congratulations, dude. The sword that I made is something that I am extremely proud of. And when it came down to the decision, 
today just wasn't my day. Congratulations, Josh. You were the Forge and Fire champion, and that's the title that comes with a check for $10,000. Come on, for shake our hands. I'm Forge and Fire champion, and I don't even know what to think right now. It's something that I can show my kids, that if you put your mind to something 100%, you can really accomplish something.